In this video, we're going to look at problem 1.4.4, which is a starred problem from Broberman. It is a harder problem, I think, and it's got a longer description. Finding an unknown interest rate for two different accounts that produces the same interest over a specified period of time. That's kind of a mouthful. There's going to be an unknown I interest rate that for two accounts is going to represent two different things. For one account, it's going to represent a, a compound interest rate that's nominal and compounding is going to occur more than once per year. And for the other account, it's going to be a simple interest rate. Here's the problem. Eric deposits X into a savings account at time zero, which pays interest at a nominal rate of I, nominal meaning in name only, um, basically because it's going to be compounded more than once per year. Uh, your inch, your effective interest rate over that first year or any year will be actually different from I. That's why it's called the nominal rate. It's in name only. And Mike deposits 2x into a different savings account at time zero, which pays simple interest at the same rate I. So I in both cap cases represents the same quantity, though it's thought of differently. Eric and Mike earn the same amount of interest during the last six months of the eighth year. Calculate that unknown I. That's our goal here. So I'm going to solve this problem. It does, I think, at first glance, seem like it could be a difficult problem. I'm going to solve it, um, and I'm also going to generalize it. And I would encourage you to consider doing this kind of thing from time to time. Oftentimes what makes a good actuary or a good mathematician is somebody who's willing to generalize what they see and explore a little bit. Let's draw our number line. Here's time zero. Um, the last six months of the eighth year, what is that? The eighth year goes from time seven to time eight. So the last six months of it will go from time 7.5 to time eight. Let me draw 7.5 and 8 on here, kind of far apart from each other on purpose because I want to leave some room for myself to write above them some expressions that are going to represent what the accounts have accumulated to, and I want to give myself space. So let's put Eric here and Mike up here. How much has Eric's account accumulated at time 7.5? All right, Eric deposits X initially. It's compound interest. I is the nominal rate, but it's compounded semi-annually twice per year. That means I over two is the semi-annual interest rate. So every half year, you keep multiplying the previous balance by one plus I over two. That's what a nominal rate of I that would be an annual rate, compounded semi-annually. That's what the factor would be that you multiply by to get the next balance after another half year has gone by. That's kind of a mouthful. When you're at time 7.5, how many half years have gone by? 15 of them. That's going to be the power here. So that's how much Mike Eric's account has accumulated, accumulated to at time 7.5. At time 8, it's going to be the same thing except to the 16th power. The difference, this thing minus that thing, is going to be the amount of interest that Eric gets over that six month period, the last six months of the eighth year. How about for Mike? His deposit is 2x. His, his money is accumulating with simple interest at annual rate i. You take one plus i times the amount of time for the factor here instead of raising to a power. The amount of time is 7.5, so I have 2x times 1 plus 7.5i for the amount at time 7.5, and for the amount at time 8, it's going to be 2x times 1 plus 8i. The difference this thing minus that thing is going to be Mike's amount of interest during the last six months of the eight year, eighth year, and these need to be equal to each other. So we get an equation we can ultimately solve for i at Seems like it could still be complicated, but it simplifies pretty nicely. Here, this difference again is Eric's amount of interest earned in the last uh, in the last uh, six months of the eight, eighth year, and this difference is the amount of interest that Mike earns. 
during the last six months of the eighth, eighth year. Solve for i, it can be simplified certainly. All the x's go away actually. You can divide everything by x. The x doesn't matter as long as Mike is paying, depositing twice as much as Eric. Um, and you can factor out a common factor of 1 plus i over 2 to the 15th power on the left side. What are you left over with after doing that factoring? You're left over with this thing. 1 plus i over 2 to the 15th times this is 1 plus i over 2 to the 16th, and then that times minus 1 is what we had here. The 1's cancel in here. This simplifies to i over 2 times 1 plus i over 2 to the 15th. The right side simplifies as well. Again, the x's went away. Distribute the 2 through 2 plus 16i, and then minus 2 minus 15i. That thing simplifies just to i. And these things need to be equal. i is a non-zero number. It can be canceled on both sides. You can multiply. You're leaving a 1 over here. You can multiply both sides by 2. We need to solve the equation 1 plus i over 2 to the 15th power equals 2. Raise both sides to the 1 15th power. 1 plus i over 2 will be 2 to the 1 15th. Subtract 1 and then multiply both sides by 2. i is going to be 2 times 2 to the 1 15th minus 1. Let's see what that is here. I guess I have to cover it. So you can, well, I can move this up here. Let me calculate 1 15th first. With this kind of calculator, that's probably the best thing to do first and store it in register 0, say. And then I want 2 to that power, 2 raised to what's in register 0. That will be 2 to the 1 15th power. Subtract 1 from that. Multiply the result by 2. The answer is about 0 0.0946 or 9.46 percent. That is the answer. What about this generalization idea? I consider the same kind of situation except I called, instead of saying it's the eighth year, I called it the teeth year, and this was, would be time t, and this would be time t minus 0.5 right there. This would represent a situation where the amount of interest they get uh, is the same in the last half of the teeth year. And basically the derivation of trying to solve for i was pretty similar. And what I got in the end, and you should check that on your own, is this expression for the interest rate that would make that amount of interest for both accounts the same in the last six months of the teeth year. And, you know, this is generalization uh, of the formula, but what was more interesting to me was to graph this function of t. You can graph i as a function of t. Um, t would need to be at least one half, bigger than one half, for this to be defined for us here uh, in a way that would make sense. And the graph, uh, actually, I focused on the graph. Let me see it here, and I, I can't show you what I'm looking at here, but I focused on the graph for t2 or larger, and the graph looked about like this, and it was close to 0.5 right there, and you can check that by plugging in t equals 2 there. Showing you one, an interesting thing, um, and this should make intuitive sense, as t increases, um, the interest rate that's going to be equivalent for both accounts decreases. This is a decreasing function. Meaning the further out in time you go on the number line where the, they have the same amount of interest the last half of the teeth year, um, the lower that interest rate is going to be to make that happen. I hope that makes some sense. I mean, another way to think of it is if it happened at a closer time, like the second year or something, because Mike deposits twice as much as Eric, you're going to need, Eric, you're going to need to be a high interest rate for the compound interest rate one to have them have the same amount of interest that last six months. But was he, what was even more interesting to me, and I would encourage you to explore this, is I actually compared this graph with the graph of a simpler function. 
Uh, the simpler function that I found was the function 1.386 over 2t minus 1. The graph of that function was practically the same. Maybe we'll think a little bit below it, but it was practically the same. And then I wondered why. Why are these approximately the same? And in fact, the, the approximation got better and better the bigger t got. And what I would encourage you to do is think about Taylor series to help you understand, see if you can understand why. And in particular, maybe think about the Taylor series for 2 times 2 to the x minus 1. I'll let you think about that. See if you can find that Taylor series centered at 0. It's also called the Maclaurin series. And hopefully you will see why this is true and why it even gets better as t gets bigger. I thought that was pretty interesting. And that'll be the end of this video.